Good evening, everyone. How are you doing? We're going to check our YouTube and Facebook to see that everything is working correctly. So if you're out there, say hello. Tell me where you're from. And let me know that you can hear me and see me okay. That would be awesome. Hey, Teresa, can you hear and see me okay? You're on YouTube, or no, are you on Facebook? No, you're on YouTube. Okay, good, awesome. All right, good evening, good evening. So we're gonna, I started a little bit early because I wanted to make sure with this new streaming software that um, everything was working correctly. So, just double checking. I can't hear on YouTube. Really? Okay. All right. Can you hear me now? Hey, Eddie. Hello, hello. <laughs> Wyoming. Are you still frozen up there? Okay. Tell me if you can hear me now. Now, okay, for some reason the mic got muted. I thought I unmuted it, but technology. Hold on. Who knows, you know what I mean? Hey, Renee from El Paso. I used to go through El Paso all the time when I was doing trade shows. Hi, Britt from Arizona. Okay, so um, if someone could check you or Facebook for me to make sure we're out there, I need to go try to find the comments because I don't see them. And I have no help tonight. So I am alone, so bear with me. And like I said, I started early, so let's give it just a few minutes. Let me see if I can find it on Facebook, and then we'll get started. Let's see here. I'm attempting. I still don't see it. Maybe it'll pop up in a minute. Sometimes it's weird and... Uh, like I said, technology, you can hear. Okay, good, good. So tonight I've done um, a series of small videos that I will play and then I'll answer questions. So I'll be able to catch the comments uh, better doing it this way. So I may have to read the comments on my phone. We'll see. All right, so is anybody out there on Facebook. If you could tell me that you can see and hear me okay, that would be great. Last time it didn't show up until long after it was supposed to start. That's why I started it um, like 10 minutes early just to kind of work out the kinks and make sure that um, everything was doing okay. So I can see myself, but I just can't see comments on Facebook. So eventually I'll, I'll be able to do that. Okay, so um, I'm Paula McCoy, owner of Colors for Earth, and tonight we're going to be doing that rainbow vase. So I've divided it into uh, quite a few different little short segments so that we can go over things and uh, review. So the first thing, you can hear me on YouTube here in Florida. and can Okay, good, Terry. Thank you for letting me know. Um, I just don't see the comments from Facebook, so I'll have to go back and answer those after we finish, just so you guys know. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is bring up uh, a mixing, how you mix the products. So we'll start with that one. Okay. Can you hear the video at all? I don't hear it on my end, so I am worried that it's not. Hey, Lucy. So, do you guys hear anything on YouTube or Facebook? There is a slight lag. Yeah, there's a, about an 8 to 10 second lag. And when I check this, everything played. And I'm going to be really upset if it doesn't play now. No sound. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> That's not good. And it says the sound is at 100%. So much for prepping. 
and getting ahead of the game here. All right, so let me see if I can find a setting. Hang on, guys. Let me see if I can... And can you hear it now? No on YouTube, no sound. Okay, so... I changed one setting, but my audio is all up. I don't understand. Can you still hear me talking, but just not the video? Technology, I hear you just fine on YouTube. Lucy, you hear my voice asking you if you can hear the video? Can't hear the video, but I can hear you. Okay. All right, so let me, um, hold on a second. Okay, hold on. Let me see if I can look at any other settings to see why it is not playing. Because it played just fine. Um, I've tested all of it. That's why I can't understand why it's not Okay, thanks, Lucy. System sound. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn on my Bluetooth speaker and see if that makes a difference to see if it happens to again. Oh, make sure all that's really stirred up. If you don't you clean don't, up your tool, you're going to get a false drift. Hold on a second. Okay. okay. I'm going back to the beginning. Let's see if it'll... Oh, that's slow motion. Thank you very much. Sure. Well, it was on there, and now it's not on there. That's just lovely. And if I try to talk over this, it's not... Maybe I should do stream only. Hold on, guys. I'm learning. I didn't test this online, but I did. Um, hi, Steven. I'm having technical issues. So I'm trying to get this video to play, and I can't get the sound to come on. So I'm not sure why it's not playing the sound. Bizarre. I'm going to go back to the beginning. Okay, so this is the phase that we're going to do tonight. I'll just talk over it. My hands may not um, meet up with it. So I have a 12 by 12, 6 millimeter uh, piece of clear glass. So double thick is what I'm doing. And the first thing that we want to do uh, is learn how to mix the colors up. Okay. So I've got the other colors mixed up. I'm going to just do... Um, one color this is the 361 leaf green so that you can see how i mix it i've got some in there but i'm going to add more so this is our tool so it has a flat end and it has a tapered end you want to use the flat end to put your color in the little jars and these are little half ounce jars that we sell and then you would add your medium to that with the gm300 okay So just add a little bit. As you get more familiar with your powders, you will, depending on the amount you take out and the amount of medium, you'll get more familiar with it. But when you're first starting, so definitely <clears throat> add more medium until you get it mixed up thoroughly. It's just like when you're baking and you're adding liquid to flour. You want to make sure you get to the bottom, you stir it up well, and then we'll do the drip test as soon as we get this all stirred up. I'm going to keep trying to find um, the sound. Mm. 
Okay, so you can see that it's still pretty thick. It's like a, it's still thick. So we're going to add just a few more drops. And then when you do your drip test, you need to take all the product off that end and then and then all of them is pointing out, you've got a tapered end and a flat end. You need the tapered end to do the test. You're going to go straight down in it and pull it out quickly. And that way you can uh, see the actual dripping. It needs to drip by the count of three to four at the most. Two to three is better. All right, so we're going to go in. I'm going to show you on uh, the side so you can see the actual drip. Okay. It's dragging your video pretty often. Okay. Put it in quickly. And it, it's this one, there's a lot in there. So when you go all the way in, it's really just dripping off of there. But I know that it's to the proper consistency. It's better for this technique to have it... Um, thinner than thicker. Hi Pat Houston. So the one here do best. So before even though you've mixed your colors up, they've set there, the medium can come to the top. You definitely want to remix them right before you get ready to use them. Okay. Make sure your glass is clean. And I use white distilled vinegar, preferably a um, lint-free cloth, like a shop towel. I can see that lagging now. Thanks, Lucy, which is odd. I'm not sure why. So I'm going to put a little vinegar on a paper towel. They also, if you have a sticky stickers or... Uh, tape on your glass use these magic erasers like the mr clean magic eraser you can get the knockoffs on amazon uh dirt cheap and just and then go over that area that have a label or or uh, mar it'll clean it right off it's really really good to do that so the colors that we're going to use tonight are the g322 lemon peel G324 Yellow Ochre, G318 Pumpkin, G310, 337 Bright Violet, G36 or 351 Cerulean, and then G361 Leaf Green. So those are our seven colors that we're going to use tonight. Okay. So here's just some examples of uh, it has the vase there in the upper right hand corner and um, this was a piece of glass so I'm going to show you how I actually cleaned it to get all the uh, markings and everything off. I see that dragon and it shouldn't drag. Your voice is dragging a bit. Not too bad. Okay. Sorry about that, Teresa. Hey, Linda. So we're not playing the sound. So these are pre-recorded videos and I'm just talking over them. Just don't touch the glue with your hands if you can keep from it. Uh, use paper towel to hold it. This had a really uh, like a sticker on there. This is hard to talk over because you don't remember exactly what you said. <laughs> so I'm using the magic eraser. I've wet it and then yeah that's really dragging. Oh my goodness. That's awful. So, 
but it is on Facebook. And then we're spinning now. Lovely. Okay, after this video, I'm going to try something different. Okay. Okay, guys. I am going to see if I can open a video. And then the question is, hold on one second. Let me open up number three. Come on. My computers. Okay, here is. Okay, so I've got the picture in the corner there for you to see. We're going to start um, on the bottom left hand corner, which is with our yellows. And I'm going to do it just like the one that's up in the corner there for you. All right, so. What, what I, I like, like to do, do I just, I just stirred, stirred these so they're, they're, they're liquefied and ready, ready to go. To go. I'm so gonna I'm going to pour, pour some here in this corner. corner. And it's echoing about distance the distance that I think, that I think I'm going to go. go. Now, now, the only the thing that I didn't say, say was, was um, um, I've got seven dollars. So. All right. Don't know if Three, I can. Four, five, six, and seven. I think you can okay. see those. This, this is, is that, that um, Stadler Triplus Tri Fine, Fine Liner. Liner. It's a water-based water marker. marker. And, and so, so this just kind of helps me lay out all seven, seven of those, those colors. colors. I'm using, I'm using the, the uh, Colors for Earth Class, class brush. brush. On the, On the website, website, it's under uh, 455 is, is the number. If you just search in. In the search, search bar, bar, but four is it or any better now, Lucy? Can, uh, put put CFE class, class lots of reverb. And now, and now I'm just, I'm just pulling, pulling some, some, okay, like, like lines, lines down, down where, where my next, next color is going to come in. in. So, so this, this is, is pretty. If, 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 if your color is mixed, is mixed properly, properly and you, you push, push down, down and, it and it comes back, can you hear the video, Teresa? You know that it is the right consistency, okay? So now it's worse. One. And now we're going to move. We can make a yellow ochre. Do just fine. Don't worry. Oh, thanks, Stephen, but I am worried. And I, <laughs> I am worried. This one kind of right in this. Because I thought this was going to be so much better by so doing it. freak out about, about that. that. So I'm going to kind of shimmy those back and forth. forth. I'm not, I'm not pushing, pushing real hard. hard. I'm, not I'm not pushing, pushing hardly touching, touching the glass. glass. I'm really I'm just moving that color around. around. Now, now I, want I want to blend, to blend these, these two together, together so, so I can, I can shimmy it back, back and, and forth, forth and drag, drag those, those colors, colors into, into each other. other. And you and can, you do, can that do that as much as you want, want as long as if you want more yellow, then wipe off your brush on a paper towel and pull that yellow up into the kind of the golden color. And then once again, you can take and feather out this edge that will make the next color. But you want to make sure that you're nice and opaque. You don't want, you can see that these are still, still translucent, translucent, but they're, they're a solid, solid on the glass. glass. So that's, that's what you're looking, looking to achieve. achieve. All, right, All right, so 18, 18 is our next one, pumpkin. pumpkin. And, and same, same thing, thing. we need, need to come, come out to about, about here this time. time. So, so as, as you, you get, get towards, towards the corner, the corner on corner, corner you're gonna, gonna need, need more product. product. And I may have to go back and actually add and mix up some more. We'll see, see how, how far, far this will go. Come on, turn the light back so we can have a better view. Okay. okay. So I'm just so kind of covering, covering the area, area that, that I, I want, want the color. the color. Yeah, guys. Okay, I'm not liking because I can see the lag in it and everything. 
So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to upload these videos to YouTube and I will create, I'll, if I can get back live and make it work, I will where I'm, you know, these videos are on my computer and it should work just fine. But for whatever reason, it's not, I feel really, really bad. So let me just talk through a couple of things and I will upload those. After you do your color application, okay, here is what that's going to look like dry. Let me turn it around the way that we had it, okay. So here is, okay, so that's the before firing. After it's fired, it looks like that, so it's shiny, okay, like the one I have underneath me. And then we're going to do the paste. And you can see that there, the white lines on everything. Okay. All right. So this is another piece because I messed up the other night when I was recording. And um, yeah, I know. I, I do feel bad though because I've tested it and it worked and then now it won't work. So anyway, um, so this is your piece dry. Okay. So all I did was take the class brush and I poured, what I did was I took that Statler Triplus fine liner, okay, and I kind of made a mark to divide this into seven pieces from corner to corner so that I kind of had a visual and I poured the color out and then I took my class brush, this, the writing's off of it, I think it's the number one, and I just went back and forth to blend them once I got it on there. You won't need very much of like the first two colors, so maybe a quarter of an ounce. And then you'll need almost a half an ounce when you get to these three middle colors because you're covering more ground. But same thing, pour it out, and I just kind of waved it when I put it on, and then I just drag it back and forth to get my variegating lines, rinse my brush, pour it out the next one. If you have trouble where maybe one is a little bit thicker than the other, then you can take what I did was I took a couple of drops of medium and put it on the piece and then I just dipped my brush in that medium to help it flow and you can almost tell like I had a drop here 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 and here do you see how that looks a little more um, chalky looking thinner okay that's where those were so I just put them out there just so that I could make sure I could get it flowing well okay added the next color, did it also, then the next and the next, okay? Then what's going to happen is after it dries, then you will need to clean the edges of your piece. So what I like to do is take a Q-tip and I seesaw it back and forth along the edge to remove any of the paint that's on there. Double check the back surface to make sure you don't have any there. Now, if you'll look at this, look at all the detail lines here. You see it's nice and you've got nice lines on the back. You don't see that as much, okay? Because it was all on the surface, okay? Hey, Kathy from Chicago. We had some technical difficulties, so I'm kind of ad-libbing as I'm going. So once this is on here, then you will need to do your noodles. Can you see on this one? I think you can. Let me change this. You see that little, it's like a clear line there and there's one here. See it right here in the yellow? It shows up really nice. So those are clear noodles. And if you're not familiar what noodles are, I use 96 COE. Okay, here's your glass noodles. And let me pull one out. So what I did was I took the long sides, put those down, marked with my marker at one end, and then I cut that noodle. And then take, I use hairspray, the cheap hairspray um, that's at the dollar store. And I put it in one of our piping bottles with the yellow tip on it. And I put dots of, I use it as a glue. 
dots onto the stringers or the noodles, whatever you're using, and then place it in place. Um, do it when you get near the kiln. Cut your pieces so the two sides are long and then the top and bottom is shorter because it's inside. You can see it down here at the yellow. It's inside. So you've got two long pieces and then the short. On the original piece, I did two sets of those. Okay, I didn't have enough clear noodles to do two sets on this one. So I had two different noodles laid out there, about a quarter of an inch from the edge, quarter of an inch from there. So you can see how it makes it look like you've done something different. What it does is the weight of that noodle diffuses into the glass and it makes it a different color. So it looks like you did something really fancy when all it is is that noodle laying on there. So that's kind of a neat effect. Oh, no problem, T. Yeah, so the paste I haven't done, so that's what I'm going to do tonight and show you. So once you get your noodles on there, you're going to full fuse, whatever your temperature is that you fire your glass to in your kiln. Okay, let me put this back in here so I don't lose it. So you're going to full fuse it, and then it looks like this. Okay. Just make sure that those edges were clean when you did it, and I'll turn it over. And same thing on the back. You won't see as many of those um, lines back and forth because most of that was done on the top surface. Okay. All right. So that's what I did to that piece. Then this one would get full fused. This one's a little bit smaller because I didn't have another piece. And I didn't turn on my video the other night when I was doing it. Or I paused it and then somehow it got shut off. So, to transfer the pattern, which I'd made a video on that also, but that's okay. I will um, make a pattern and put this up on the blog. I'm not going to... I got stuff all over me. Um, I have like a partial pattern, but it's not big enough for the whole piece. So, it depends on... Of course, you could stretch it or whatever in a PDF. But what you want is graphite paper okay you can use uh whoops backside royal lang nickel this is their white graphite paper or you can use sorel sorel is a wax free it's basically the same thing um, you can get it in multiple colors it comes in a roll like your foil or your saran wrap okay and I believe it was Dick Blick that carried these. I haven't seen these in the craft stores in forever. Okay. But this is great if you're doing, uh, you need to transfer a pattern to acrylics or for this purpose on the glass. Now, I will say though, if you're going to paint with this pattern on there, be very cautious. Um, we have problems with the red, but you should be able to use the white. Since we are using the piping, I'm not worried about it on here, okay? So you would put the shiny side down. Do you see the difference? You got a shiny side and a matte side. Okay, so the shiny side goes down. You got, Lucy said that she got some of the Sorel from Amazon. Is that correct, Lucy? Or are you talking about the graphite? You could probably get either one, more than likely. Okay. So then, so what I did earlier tonight was I just taped down, took a piece of painter's tape, and I taped my pattern inside that uh, noodle diffusion line. And then I slipped shiny side down, my Sorel underneath it, and then I took one of my dotting tools and I went over it. Now, as I started that, I remembered that if you take a colored pen, it could be blue, black, I wouldn't use black on black, but red or blue or green or whatever. If you'll do that, this one happens to be a red, um, I don't even know what it is, uniball roller. So if you do that, and I'll just do a line over here, okay, it's a fine line and it does transfer. I think you can see that. Let me zoom in just a little bit more see the lines okay so they're white so if I were to draw a line there it would be right there this can wipe off just by doing your finger 
okay or you can take a paper towel and do it just remember you're on your glass try not to put too many fingerprints on there okay all right let's scooch back out a little bit all right so does that all make sense yeah, sorry about that Ann. sorry I, I yeah Facebook has changed a lot of things and I know a lot of different people are having problems so what I ended up having to do was I remembered at the time that I did one of these and I had silk screened it on so I went quickly and found my silk screen we do not sell these it was a custom screen that my lady made for me when I was doing this piece but what I did was I laid my pattern over it to extend it because I originally drew this many many years ago um, so I will make you a clean pattern you may have to piece it in two because it's bigger than eight and a half by eleven obviously okay that was a good tip all right Teresa awesome I'm glad you know every time we do a project there's usually something different in it and hopefully it will help somebody and somehow I got uh, paste over here okay so everybody understand how to get a pattern whether it's colored glass or you've colored the glass so if you have a shortage or you can't find colors um, you can make your own colored glass with your colors for earth enamels okay so the white piping paste my labels a little uh, rubbed off this is the white low fire no fire piping paste same one that I use on my ornaments okay so it comes in a four ounce jar I always date my jar so that I make sure that I if I open it I you know like a year later I know it's could be uh, dried up do you see how I've kept it fairly clean along the sides so I try to keep it scraped down so that what's in the bottom is the liquid so I just use my tool to do that okay then when you I'm not going to open this particular bottle but you have your piping bottles they come in the one or the half ounce and you would take and scoop it in and put it into your piping bottle and I've got several other videos showing those so I'm not going to go into that in great detail all right so I've added the white tip the tips go on with just a half a turn always check and I've got a paper towel here that I folded in force and then I dip the corner in water so it's damp here on the end always check to make sure that it's even squeezing out of your tube before you try to put your cap on or your tip on excuse me half a turn righty tighty lefty loosey okay if you turn it any more than that it's going to you'll have a hard time getting it off then once again double check that it's coming out and then keep that tip in that nice moist towel which I'm going to moisten mine again I'm just going to squirt it with some water okay and that will uh, keep that fresh it also I can wipe it off on that to keep the end of my tip free of any debris because I don't want a little chunk that I'm going to transfer and put down on my piece of glass okay all right so are we sounding okay and doing okay out there hopefully all right then you need a paper towel to protect wherever you're and I cut myself today I ran into something um, I, that's it's been my week I broke my toe on Sunday and today I did that and then I started doing this and now the video I think I'm gonna give up <laughs> <laughs> oh guys you know technology can't live with it can't live without it all right that protects your glass I lay my tip on this side and I can zoom in just a little bit Oop, that's okay we'll move this back so you can see get everything out of my way so I lay it on its side and I'm literally touching the glass scraping the glass and looky there a little air pocket I'll bet I'll show you how to clean now I'm not gonna keep going I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna start and meet it up with that one because if I went I would be going backwards and I would be scraping off what I'm putting on hopefully that makes sense so I'm just gonna take a damp brush 
and I'll clean that up. That's the nice thing about the glass. You can just wipe it off. I didn't shake it back down after. And try to leave, when you're not using your bottle, leave it laying down. Don't keep standing it up, sitting it down, you know, turning it over. Because when you do that, you definitely get those air pockets in it. So pull in your little fine lines. And then come back and add a dot at the end. Okay. And then I need to go add my little curved lines from the center. So I'm wiping off the tip each time because I'm touching that other piece and I could have a little chunk on there. So if you're doing a circle, it's a half and a half is best. Okay. Any questions about, yes, I broke my toe Sunday. I was in a hurry. The same one that I broke when I was out of town back in, what was that, August? It's not pretty. I got to quit getting in a hurry is what is happening. Too much to do and not enough time to do it. I need to clone myself. That could be dangerous, though. Sounding okay. You left face. Okay. Sorry about that, Ann. It's uh, Facebook. What can you say? It is Facebook, right? But look how rich those colors are. Is that... Oh, you know what? You're not going to be able to see that unless I zoom out. Let me go out a little. There we go. Okay. You can, otherwise you can't see it so if you need to turn that tip the other direction so that you can come this way you can do that too just remember not to do a complete circle so and I should have done the center and worked myself out but if you were doing this circle to connect all those so I'm going to stop there and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go the other direction. And I'm going really slow to make sure I get it. And then I've got a line in here and one here. My paste has been in my bottle for a while, so it's a little thicker than I like. And then you can close it up. And I believe, if I remember right, I just did a solid blob there. Let's look at it and see. I think that's what I did. Yeah. Yeah, it's got a solid center there. Okay. This was done many years ago, probably eight, nine years ago. And uh, my hand was definitely more steady back then. Just slow your... Just show your... Oh, <laughs> slow myself down. Yeah, I know. I, I need to. It's, uh, it's a bad habit of mine. Like I said, too much to do and not enough time to do it in. Okay. So, and I've had done tons of other videos on the piping. But I wanted to show you, you know, the trick to transferring a pattern. Just be careful and don't make that pattern. You see how fine these lines are? Um, really, really fine. Because if you were trying to paint... These will burn off, okay? But if you're trying to paint over those, I don't, if you have any problem with, you feel like it's repelling, um, you know, maybe the lines were too heavy. Or what happens a lot of times, guys, is they change the formulas and stuff. And it may work seven years ago, and today it doesn't work. Okay, I've had that happen with like Sharpie markers. We used to be able to use Sharpies to transfer onto ceramics, but um, there are certain instances you can't use that anymore. So, is this just a single sheet of glass? Okay, so if you've just joined me, this is a single sheet, but it is a double, it is a double thick. And I'm going to move this out of my way before I hit it and break it. So this is the color dry, unfired, 
and you can see it's a double thick so you could do a single and just put another piece underneath it if you wanted absolutely but I did it on a double thick or a six millimeter sheet of glass good question okay just remember anytime you're painting on glass with the enamels to clean your edges you don't realize it and something's dripped over the edge and just use the q-tip and seesaw it back and forth so it doesn't matter what you're working on that's what you need to do okay so as you can see you just this would take hours I'm like a couple of days honestly to do this and I believe I have one sold so I'll have to do it but I'm not going to do it online because I don't want to keep you here this particular and then you will fuse this again you'll go at least to 1380 because that's the minimum temperature that you need to go to for our enamels and our glass products okay but if you have a full fuse going just throw it in there but if not go at least to 1380 with a 10 or 20 minute hold and you should be fine the hotter you go it's going to absorb more into the glass it's going to melt or you know go into it where it's not so raised i can tell you that on the little dots on the end of the stamens you can feel that you cannot really feel there's a little tiny bit of texture and i don't know that the camera would even pick up any of the texture but you can feel it a little bit but it is it's one with the glass okay and you want your colors opaque but you can tell that you still have the translucency of it when lights behind it whether you're going to drill it and make it into a lamp i showed you a picture of that this one was actually my first one i did and it you want to see the boo-boo it stretched it do you see that at the bottom it stretched it it was like paper thin so to save this i put that water it's in the floral department somebody told me about it they said oh just put that in it and it'll harden up it's like the fake water that they use in some arrangements so i put that in there and i carried this on a plane all the way to slumpies one year and used it as a demo when i was teaching out there so it made it through it so i definitely recommend that if you want to save the piece okay um there's a lady in the dallas area she's in hazlitt sean Getchen, I think is how I'm, I'm probably not pronouncing her name. I will go back and find a link. She has some wonderful forms where she's got like the uh, cocktail shaker and then she's got pieces that you actually put. I did not use it on this piece, but where you can actually create the folds. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. So um, I will put her link in there after we get off here. All right. Okay. So any questions on what I did so you can go back and look at the um, mixing of the colors you like this one yeah like I said I've got I've got one as the lamp and then I did this one as a vase it was up on a high shelf and I had to get up there and get it down and then transferring with the Sorel or the graphite paper okay so here's your and this is just one particular brand um, but just remember that when you're using it the shiny side goes down the matte side is up and then you put your pattern on top of that and then just trace over it and you can even see and you can use this over and over and over you can see the pattern that we did can you see that I think you can there you go you can see that so if I were going to use it again I would just move it slightly but it does it's great for multiple uses okay so I will put a pattern probably tomorrow I'll put that pattern we did sell the silk screens at one point uh, but I will and it was only just the eight and a half by eleven but I will continue the pattern for you and I'll put it up on a blog post and I will upload each video and I'll put each video as a separate one that you can go in and watch any of those that you want hopefully that'll help what millimeter was the noodles or the stringers they are honestly i don't remember because it's been so long ago and i don't think it says it's just a standard uh, i'm 96 maybe bullseye has different sizes but i would say they're 
gosh, they're like a sixteenth of an inch, so maybe one millimeter Brit would be my guess, because it does not say on here. It just says five ounces, but there's no other indication on what it is, but it's super, super thin. And I don't know that I have, yeah, I don't have a uh, yeah, ruler here either. Okay, so somebody is saying you use bullseye, so maybe they have different sizes. Okay, so let me switch back to me. Hi there, I'm kind of frazzled. <laughs> it's been a long day. It's crazy. Would you believe we had 75 degrees yesterday and to believe we, uh, last week where we're in the middle of a, a freeze? It was crazy. Okay. Well, I'm glad that you like that idea, TJ, because, you know, you just, you want to be able to save it after you've done, you know, all that work on it. And it's a big piece. This is a 12 by 12 piece of glass that I'm working on. So the larger you go, you know, you can have more folds in it, but Sean has some wonderful lighting. She, like I said, she's across town over in Hazlitt. Um, you can find her on a lot of the selling boards, you know, um, glass tools. She's on there a lot. She'll offer specials where it's like a flat rate and you get this package. She's got some very, and I haven't used hers, but I am going to. And I tried to go find mine and I just didn't have time today, so... You need to make a trip to Texas? Absolutely. Grab Robin and come on out. I would love it. Well, I'm glad you like it, Stephen. Um, it shows you, and I'll get those uploaded. It won't take long. I'll upload each video individually, and then you can uh, go watch those, and the sound will be there. So, do you have to wear a mask to mix the paint? That's a good question, Terry. Um, you know, if you were mixing like a pint of it or a four ounce, I would say yes. Um, if you're asthmatic, then definitely wear a mask. I do not. I've not had any problems, but precaution. I should have said that because they are a dry enamel. So, excuse me, it's a good idea to put a mask on while you're mixing and stirring. Because if you're sifting, definitely. You don't think that when you're sifting, you see it going to the piece, but you don't realize there's a plume of the enamel also that is in the air. So when I sift um, color on to do my Murini pools, yes, I'm wearing a mask because it's a large volume. And if you step back from it, you can actually see like a cloud. It's not thick. It's, you know, just lightly, but it is there. So you don't want to inhale that. Okay. All right. Any other questions? I hope you like this even though the video didn't work I can't believe because normally we would have been like an hour <laughs> but it is what it is you know so if you want to see that again I'll flip down here okay so you can see what that looks like I also do want to make sure if you're unfamiliar uh, you guys are on YouTube so make sure you subscribe like and share this is our website Okay, and I know what I'll do. This is kind of cool. This is a new fe feature. So here's the website. At the very top, you can't see my cursor, but when I hover over things. So underneath the education tab, you can go to the free projects, the video tutorials. You can go to the learn here. And if you do the learn here, you can go to downloadable projects. This is so cool because it's an interactive element of this program I use. So these are showing, of course, there's some ceramic ones here, but you can, I knew I'd do that. You can go and you can scroll down and you can find ones that are glass related. There's the paste. So these are downloadable. So instant, if they're large files, they may take a little bit of time to download. But be sure and check those out. I've got a lot of them that are on sale. $7.50, $8. <laughs> Don't beat myself up. Okay, thanks. <laughs> um, but you guys are on YouTube, so you know what it looks like. So be sure and subscribe. Hit that bell. And you'll get notifications of all the ones that I upload. So if you haven't done that, when I get ready to do that, um, 
you guys are glass related so let's go back here is some examples of different pieces that I've done um, there's some that are lives the pour in the bottom left hand corner is alive uh, I did the vase with the flowers as a live I've got the sunflower videos coming up I haven't finished editing those but I will probably put those on the website with a link but I don't know that I'm gonna put it out there as a free but I will announce it on Facebook. The Dragonfly is one of the downloadable. You can buy the PDF or the video and PDF on there. Thank you, Georgina. I, I enjoy doing what I do. Here is, if you're a ceramic person joining us, this is just some examples of some of the ceramic pieces. The Toucan is a book that I did many, many years ago. I think that was probably 2005. Uh, so the butterfly bowl is a freebie. It's out there on the free techniques. Okay. If you're a cone five, six stoneware mid range, here's some pieces and a kit that I made up for you guys. Okay. And color charts. And here is some of the different kits. So if you're a clay person, you may want that clay share kit. You just type in clay share. There's the color concentrates and then some glass kits okay all right guys let me go back and I'm here so that's kind of cool at least that part worked right <laughs> trying to get everything to work is something else but anyway all right I'm gonna let you go I'm gonna get those videos uploaded so that you can see them in entirety and not just a real quick run through like I did it and I will see you next week uh, remember that I'm going to be on ClayShare if you're a clay person, so be sure and uh, join the ClayShare group on Facebook, or they do have a um, YouTube channel also. Everything will be on there. Um, I am on Wednesday night, the 22nd, on ClayShare Prime, if you're a Prime member, and then the Friday and Saturday, I have a spot on those. Um and I have to go unload the kiln to see the peach pieces that I posted the other day. They were still at 200 degrees before I started, so I couldn't pull them out. All right. You are welcome. And thank you guys again for your support. And happy painting.